All right, now turn back in your Bible uh, to Deuteronomy. My wife uh, decided to look up the verse that I messed up on earlier. Deuteronomy chapter 29. That's what helpmates do. Surprises you, you know, when you're a single man, you think that you got a lot of things figured out, and then you get married and you, you realize that there's a lot of, you know, blank spots up here in the old brain, and that's what the wife is, you know, good at. A lot of times she comes in and, and fills in the empty places that I have up here, things I forget to do. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 20, not 28, verse 20, like I tried to do earlier. It says here, the Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. Yes, that was the verse that I was looking for. Thank you. You know, again, a picture of somebody who's lost. You see there God's wrath coming upon that man and smoke being involved. Very good. Isaiah chapter 34 Isaiah 34, verse 8. It says here, For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Okay. Again, speaking there of the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, there's going to be areas of the, of the earth there where it's going to be just totally destroyed, totally wasted. And you see there again the thing of smoke being connected with judgment. Okay? Um, turn next to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Joel 2, verse 30 through 32. It says here, And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Hmm. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. It doesn't say in um, Phoenix, Arizona, or uh, Harlem, you know, uh, up in New York or something like this, or wherever some of these false prophets are trying to say that the Millennial Kingdom is going to be set up. Uh, don't listen to people like that. If they're saying that the Millennial Kingdom is going to be set up anywhere but Jerusalem, they're lying to you. They're false prophet. Okay? Don't fall for that thing. But you see, one of the signs that's going to be given of this time period is pillars of smoke. Hmm. Very interesting. Turn next to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 19. Here you have Peter preaching to these people, and he quotes or refers back to Joel, chapter 2 there. He says here, Acts chapter 2, verse 19, he says, And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the great, that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So there you have Peter referring back to the events there in, in Joel chapter 2. Um, but you see there again, this thing of smoke. Very interesting. Revelation chapter 8. We're going to look at some of these instances here where I think some of this is going to be fulfilled in the future. Revelation 8, verses 1 through 5. 
Okay, it says here, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of an half, or half an hour. Okay, and people go, I thought there was no time in heaven. Well, he doesn't say it was a half hour. He says about the space of half an hour. So John in his reckoning there, as a man that was just up there to see it, you know, and had to write this stuff down, he's saying about the space of half an hour. You know, verse 2. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Huh. Kind of like when God came down to the mountain there to deal with the Jews the first time. I wonder if that would be because God's dealing with the Jews again in the time of Jacob's trouble. I don't know how these people, these post-tribbers, just get so deceived into thinking that they are the center of attention in this book of Revelation. We are the ones that go through the tribulation. The church is going to go through the tribulation. Um, you're rather foolish, okay? Uh, stupid, you might say. You know, read the Bible. God's dealing with the nation of Israel. Oh, then you're saying that no, no Gentiles are going to be saved. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, there are some Gentiles that will be saved. Yeah, sure, there will be plenty of them that miss the rapture. I don't doubt, you know, some post-tribbers that, that hate Israel and stuff. Being post-trib doesn't mean that you're not saved, by the way. I'll say that. But uh, a lot of these guys get so mixed up in other heresies and things, easy believism and, and uh, replacement theology and everything else. They're just so messed up in their heads. Uh, some of those guys might get saved when they miss the actual rapture. Um, but... The fact of the matter is, you look at the time of Jacob's trouble, it's all about God redoing a lot of the miracles that he did back there in the Old Testament for the Jewish people. And he does it because it's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's meant to bring the nation of Israel back in line with Scripture. Okay? And at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, you see the Jews entering into the kingdom. Not saved Christians that endured to the end. Okay, turn next to Revelation 9, verses 1 through 3. Okay, now remember that angel there, he, he sent that fire and that smoke down to the earth. So what happens, Revelation chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven upon, unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke... Out of, the fur, out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Uh, that sounds like a negative thing to me. You know, yeah, just a little bit, you know. You have all this smoke coming up out of the bottomless pit, and locusts come out. And you read about these locusts, with the hair of women and the faces of men, you know. And they go out and they sting men. And it says about that, uh, verse 10 there, it says about their power was to hurt men five months. Now, usually if you get a bee sting or something like that, or a, even a scorpion, I was never stung by a scorpion, but I imagine it's very painful and it probably lasts for a little while. But five months? Ouch. You know, um, that would tend to get a little annoying almost half a year of being in pain, you know, from getting stung. I remember earlier this year, we were up here and right over that way, we were picking berries, and uh, we hiked up to this area and uh, picking berries, and I don't know what it was. Something came out, got me on the arm, and then came up here and got me on the back of the neck. And I swatted it and went down, and it was in the weeds. I couldn't see if it was a wasp or a hornet or yellow jacket. or I have no idea what the thing was. But whatever it was, it got me good. And I hurt for about eh, a couple hours after that, you know, and because uh, I was too bullheaded to, to go to hike back out of here and you know, take care of it. So I was just, I'll deal with the pain, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I get that way sometimes. But, um, you know, it hurt for a while, but it went away. 
you know, can you imagine five months? That pain for five months? Whew. I am glad I'm not going to be here for that time period. But look at verse 14 there in chapter 9. Revelation 9 verse 14 says, Saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. You know, let me just stop for just a second. I have to make a point here. A lot of times I say about the imminence of the rapture, the imminence of, you know, if the Lord tarries and all this other stuff. Um... I have to correct myself on that. Uh, as I study it more and more, it looks like it's not really imminent. It's more that the Lord has the thing planned. I mean, obviously, if these guys are set there, I mean, right down to the hour, a day, a month, a year, you know, to slay the third part of men. Um, if the Lord has that thing planned out, then he has the time, the rapture, you know, timed. And he has, you know, the, the catching away of the body of Christ. Or, well, the rapture, I'm sorry. The uh, the time of Jacob's trouble is what I meant to say. He has that thing timed out. Okay? That's still an issue that I'm studying. All right? Um, I'm very careful to just come right out and say, oh, I agree with people when somebody says, hey, Brian, you need to look into this or you need to look into that. I'm careful to study it first. And I'm a little bit thorough. I guess sometimes I take too long <laughs> studying it. But uh, just be patient with me if you're out there and you've kind of told me about this imminence thing. Um, I'm studying it, okay? Just wanted to make that little point there. I'm not infallible, all right, uh, brethren? Just uh, be patient with me. But uh, verse 16, And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. People say, well, that's a tank. Eh, I don't think so. I take that thing literally. I mean, John's not going to look down there and say, oh, those tanks, those, you know, M1 Abrams tanks down there, they look like horses. No, he's a little more intelligent than that. A tank does not resemble a horse. Okay, you say it's an Apache helicopter. No, I think that's nonsense too. I think it is exactly what it says it is. Just like these weird locusts that come up out of the bottomless pit. <coughs> I think they're literal. I think these things are literal too. Okay, verse 18. By these three were the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. Um, again, I can't imagine being here for that thing. And a third part of the men on the earth are going to be killed by that army. You know, uh, that would tend to probably give you some fear, knowing that this weird army is coming and they want to kill you. Um, I'm glad I'm saved. Revelation 18. Here's the one I like. This is going to be a good time here. Uh, Revelation 18. Verse 15. Okay. It says here, the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, 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 that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught. Yes, that can happen. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by the sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships by in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate, or is she made desolate? Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. 
and the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be, uh, he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee, and the light of a candle shall no more at all, or shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for the, thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. It's talking about the Roman Catholic Church, okay? Mystery Babylon there. The city, the, the mother church, you know? That's what's going to be destroyed. And up in heaven, everybody's hugging each other and crying and saying, Oh, I just hated to see that. That was so horrible. I just don't know why God would have poured out His wrath like that. Right? Uh, no. Let's look at uh, chapter 19, verse 1. And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up for ever and ever. Smoke again there. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. So we're going to be, be having a celebration. Okay, We're not going to weep for the Catholic Church and say, Oh, you know... St. Peter's, St. Peter's Basilica has been ruined. Oh boy, look at all that gold that, that uh, was destroyed down there and all the riches and all the wealth and everything in that area and stuff. Uh-uh. We're going to be up there having a party, having a good old time because we see the Roman Catholic Church being destroyed. And uh, you need to think about that if you're a Catholic. Okay? You better get out of that system. All right. And we're going to hit a couple more scriptures here in closing. You say, well, okay, you know, we saw here in the Bible, the Bible talks a lot about smoke. Um, what can we safely assume from what we've seen here in the Bible? Is smoke something that is a leisure activity? No. Um, when God is associated with smoke, there's really not that many references to that being positive. Okay, um, when God made a covenant there with Abraham, yeah, that was positive. You know, he passed between the animals, the, the sacrifices there, as a burning lamp and smoke. You know, he appeared to Moses as a burning bush, you know, and, and a pillar of, of smoke by day, cloud by day, and a fire by night. You know, there are those positive references. But uh, when God has smoke coming out of his nostrils and kindles a fire in his mouth and fire comes out, it's negative. It's a sign of judgment, God's wrath. Why would a Christian want to smoke? I mean, would that affect your perception of me? If I said, uh, in closing here, let me just uh, light one up. It's been kind of a little while here since I've been able to smoke, and you know, you know, put one in. You know, I'm sitting here smoking. You know, well, of course that would look bad. So why would you do it? You know, am I better than other Christians out there? No. Uh, we're all going to have to answer the judgment seat of Christ. I mean, give an account of our lives. Uh, it's a really bad testimony, brethren. And don't try to use any of these scriptures to, to justify your smoking addiction. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Here's the real uh, rule for a Christian. This is something that you have to think about before you do anything in this life. I mean, you know, what the big argument would be, people will come out and they'll say, well, there's no direct open prohibition in Scripture that says, thou shalt not smoke camel cigarettes or something. You know, so then it must be okay, right? No. Um, the Bible doesn't have to openly condemn certain sins for those sins to be wrong. Here's the test. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Now, as I said, if I was smoking on camera here, would that edify you as my brother or sister in the Lord? 
No. Um, would it be expedient? I mean, we're trying to save up our money, you know, to, to buy land and build a home on it and things. Um, is it expedient to go out and spend thirty, forty, fifty dollars for a carton of cigarettes? You know, no, that's not expedient. And uh, you know, let me just say, I want to kick something else here too while I'm at it, because I'm here, you know, uh, in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where I grew up. Um, there's a lot of Mennonite and Amish farmers, and they are holy, holy people, you know, and yet they grow tobacco in their fields. And they get rich off of tobacco. And, you know, my wife was doing some research and she found that tobacco plants actually deplete the soil. They draw a lot of nutrients out of the soil. You know, it's a weed, basically. And the, the Native American people here in America would use this weed and they'd smoke it and get high and whatever else, you know. And the white man comes here and he realizes, hey, I can make some money at this thing. And so he plants this weed all through the fields and buys up all these big fields to plant his tobacco crop and it depletes the soil which messes with your regular crops that you eat. So tobacco has never been right. Okay, You aren't going to see that in the in the Bible where you know Paul and Peter were lighting up outside the you know the meeting place there you know the upper room and things they went out back and had a smoke afterwards or something. You don't see that there. Alright you shouldn't be messing around with cigarettes. Very 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 bad for your health. You say, well, I won't go to hell if I smoke, right? No, you won't go to hell. You're going to lose your salvation. Uh, there's a lot of stupid things that you can do as a Christian that you won't lose your salvation. It doesn't make it right. Okay? All things are lawful for you, but they're not all expedient, and they don't all edify. Now, the parallel verse to that is 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12. Turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. Just a few chapters back here. First. Corinthians 6.12 says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Um, question. Can you smoke cigarettes and not be brought under the power of them? Well, I assume you could if you didn't smoke that many, but it doesn't often work that way, does it? Pretty soon you're smoking a pack a day or maybe a half a pack a day or something like that. Why? Because you're addicted to the nicotine. And that stuff gets into your body and it starts to mess with your lungs, starts to mess with your, mess with your health. And before long, you're on your back with lung cancer or emphysema or any other kind of things that come as a result of cigarette smoking. Plus you stink too, you know. I mean, you know, let's just be honest about it. You know, every once in a while, I'll, I'll try to get some used things off of eBay or I sell through eBay, try to buy things from eBay, you know, save money. And you get some kind of thing, and you open the box up, and it's like, whoa, boy, you can smell the cigarette smoke. You know, I'm not even there with the person. It's not like the person, the seller's there in the box smoking or something. No, it's just that in their house, uh, they smoked. You know, I've, I've had vehicles different times where it was a former person that smoked that owned the vehicle. That thing will stink for years. I don't care how many of those little pine tree air fresheners you get and put it in the thing. Do you think the Lord wants you to mess with that? No. The Lord doesn't want you to mess with that. And then finally, let's go back to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs 10. I'm going to see some interesting things here. Proverbs 10, verse 23 through 27. It says here, it is as sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. And I'm going to just kind of go verse by verse here because there's some real good stuff in this. You know, it's a sport to a fool to do mischief. You know, most people that take up cigarette smoking, they don't do it in the front of their parents. They're out back behind the barn or out in the woods or out with their buddies from high school, you know, and they go out and they smoke tell you a little story about myself. Uh, me and a friend of mine back when I was a, a kid, I was probably, I don't know, 12 years old, 11 or 12 years old, and we were riding our bicycles on these backcountry roads, and there's this package of uh, cigars, little miniature cigars, White Owl Miniatures. I'll never forget the name brand. White Owl Miniatures. And they're a brand new package laying there. 
And so we're, you know, I pulled over and I grabbed it and I'm like, wow, you know, this is really neat. You know, we found cigars. Wow, this is great. And uh, so we took them. And of course, I didn't show them to my parents or anything. And uh, showed them to my older brother and, and me and my older brother and our friends, his friend and my friend, we went out into the field at night, out into the cornfield. And we were sitting out there, we had a little campfire going, you know, and, and uh, you know, as we get out into an area where the corn wasn't growing real good and we didn't have a little campfire so we were hidden you know and uh, we're out there get these white owl miniatures out and we're lighting them and handing them around I never smoked before I had no idea and so I didn't realize that you're supposed to smoke a cigar and you don't breathe in the smoke you into your mouth and out well, I didn't know so I breathed it in and just <sighs> swallowed it well that was it one puff from a cigar like that and I'm coughing and gagging and spitting and thinking I'm going to die, you know. And uh, that was the last time I ever smoked. And I often wonder about that and I think, you know, was that the devil that put those cigars there along the road or was that the Lord, you know, to teach me a lesson? Because I learned a lesson that day. I learned that smoking is a very, very, very bad thing. Uh, not only is it, is it expensive, but it's also just horrible. I mean, why on earth do you want to put this smoke into your mouth and, in, and it gets into your lungs and coming out your nose and stuff? Horrible. I don't understand how people can do that. But, you see, what was I? I was a fool. And I was doing mischief. That's why I was hiding from my parents. Just like a lot of people out there that smoke. They act like a fool by smoking, because it is foolish when you think about it, when you get right down to it, a bunch of leaves rolled up in a piece of paper and you light it and you breathe it in and you blow it out through your nose. That's stupid, you know? And so you're a fool and you're doing mischief because you're hiding from your parents, you know? Oh, but the Lord's for that, right? Sure, sure. Verse uh, 24. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. You know one of the fears of the wicked people that smoke? The fear is all of a sudden you start getting some pain in your chest and you can't breathe quite right. And the fear comes upon you, what if I have lung cancer? You know, that's not of the Lord. Okay? And, you know, the righteous there, where does it say it? The, the desire of the righteous shall be granted. You know the Lord's going to not answer too many of your prayers if you're a smoking Christian? He's going to be a little rough on you. I've seen that thing. All right, God doesn't want you smoking as a Christian. But look at verse 26. or uh, I'm sorry, verse 25. As the whirlwind passes, passeth, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Very true. Uh, you'll live longer if you're righteous and you stay away from cigarettes. Verse 26, as vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that send him. Hmm, smoke to the eyes. It's quite irritating, isn't it? Look at verse 27, the fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. And that's where we're going to close today. If you fear God, you aren't going to smoke. You're going to say, I don't want anything to do with smoking. All right? It's never given as a recreational activity in the Bible that's a cool thing to do or something like this. It's expensive. It'll ruin my health. You know, and it's a bad testimony. I fear God. I'm not going to smoke. All right? And that'll prolong your days. But if you're wicked, your years are going to be shortened. You smoke cigarettes long enough, you'll end up on your back. Okay? You will get emphysema. You will get lung cancer. You will get some other kind of disease. And quite frankly, you're going to stink. You know, people aren't going to want to be around you. And you're going to have a real hard time witnessing for Jesus Christ. And literally, you're going to see some smoke in eternity as well at the judgment seat of Christ when you see your works go up in flame. Uh, you don't want to smoke as a Christian. Uh, and I know, you know, I know Christians that have smoked and I know, you know, people that profess to be saved and they smoke. I understand that. You know, I understand you get into a bad habit before you get saved, um, and then you get saved, and then you want to quit, and it's very difficult to get away from cigarettes. Uh, and there's a lot of information out there for you. I remember I heard the one time uh, Hugh Pyle said about how that 
as a way to wean yourself off of cigarettes, obviously pray about it. But another way that you can wean yourself off of it is look at how much money you've spent on cigarettes or you spend on cigarettes on a regular basis and then say, okay, I'm not going to smoke for this month. And what I've spent on cigarettes last month, this month I'll buy something for myself. So it kind of gives you something to, to look forward to. I mean, I've heard stories of people that get saved and they're smoking, they're smokers, they get saved and they take that cigarette or that pipe or that cigar and they just go down and they're done. Boom. Um, other people, they have a hard time with it. I'm sympathetic to that. You know, I, I've struggled with sins and things and bad habits. I understand, you know, but you got to get victory over that thing, brethren. You cannot continue smoking and expect to be in right fellowship with the Lord. You can't do it. You know, uh, very, very important. And um, if you've watched this message and you're lost, you don't know for sure that you're saved, boy, you better get saved soon because the time of Jacob's trouble is rapidly approaching. I don't know the day or the hour. I don't know the time that the thing is going to happen. Um, it could be soon. Uh, I know some of the brethren you know, talk about the, uh, some of the Jewish feast days and they're saying it could be as early as September coming up here. I don't know. I, like I said, I've looked at the issue. I haven't. I just don't feel like I've studied it enough to really say one way or the other at this point in time. But um, the Lord is coming back. And he's going to be taking his saints away. And if you don't make it for the catching away of the body of Christ, you're going to have to die for Jesus Christ in that time period that's coming. You're going to be beheaded, more than likely, or tortured to death, or God knows what else is going to happen to you. Um, it's going to be bad. And if you don't make it to the rapture, and you don't make it as a tribulation saint, and you take the mark of the beast, uh, your smoke is going to ascend up forever and ever. You're going to be living in smoke and fire forever. And, you know, when you get around a real bad fire or something like that, and there's a lot of smoke, it burns your eyes and things, like we read there in Proverbs, that smoke burning your eyes, that's eternity for you if you're lost. Boy, I wouldn't want to go to there. But uh, that's going to be it on, for this message. Um, got a bunch more stuff coming out here in the future. A lot of work to do, but uh, uh, just keep praying for the ministry. And um, we'll see here as, as we continue. Going to have some multi-part studies coming out and things. More pre-trib rapture moments coming up too. I've been designing a couple new ones. Um, so we'll see. But let's close here with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I do thank you, Lord, that uh, we can know that we are saved. Those of us that have put our faith in your shed blood on the cross. Uh, we, can, we can know that we have a right relationship with you. We can know that we are sealed until the day of redemption. We don't have to worry about uh, being consumed in fire, being burned forever and ever and ever down in the fires of hell. Don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about facing your wrath, uh, the, the terrible things that you're going to do to this earth. And uh, Lord, I thank you for those promises of your word. Uh, but Lord, I want to pray a special prayer for any Christian out there that is having trouble with, with uh, smoking, a smoking addiction. I pray, Lord, that you would just really convict that person out there, man or woman. I know both do it nowadays. I just pray, Lord, for your conviction to be upon them and that you would help them to overcome this horrible addiction that they have, that they'd be able to get away from, from cigarettes or from pipe or from cigars. Even chewing tobacco, Lord, it's, it's still it's, it's that, that wicked plant. That's a weed and it's just a blight upon our society. Nothing positive comes from that weed. I just pray, Lord, that they would be convicted of it and that they'd get away from it and uh, return to your word and clean up their lives, both uh, spiritually and physically. And I just, uh, I guess, just pray that everyone out there would just continue to stay in your word and stay praying, stay listening to the right kind of music. No matter how um, bad times get, give everybody out there uh, strength in witnessing. And um, I just ask all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. That's going to be it. Um, thank you very much for watching. And like I said, uh, keep looking for some new videos to come out. Please keep praying for the ministry. Um, a lot of things going on right now. 
So I just pray that, uh, just please pray for the Lord's strength as we have a lot going on. So that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.